Hey guys! So it's been three months that I haven't water changed uh, my salt water tank. I set it up and that was the last time I water changed it pretty much. Uh, so I want to share with you uh, my secrets to this uh, amazing setup or so I believe that it's amazing uh, because it's so low tech, so low maintenance. Uh, why shouldn't I share it with you how to do it easily? Um, just on the subject, I'm not the best saltwater geek, okay? So my advices are based on my own personal experiences and the, the experimentations I do on my tanks and my clients' tanks. So uh, this tank uh, has been running technically for a year and a half, but I've been upgrading it in size over the past year and a half. So I started with a 20, then for a year it was a 40 gallon, and now it's a 65 gallon. So let's come closer and show you some corals while I talk to you. Uh, so the stocking is um, pretty big, I find. I have two clownfish, which are right there in the anemone. This is a Haitian uh, purple tip anemone, by the way. Let me just zoom in on it. Uh, so I have two clownfish. I have a coli tank. I have an Atlantic blue tank, which is featured right here. It's gonna come through. I have a um, red wrasse, which is currently on top right there. I hope she will come closer. I do believe this is a female. I don't remember the name exactly, but it's a wrasse, so it's a wrasse, okay? <laughs> I have uh, these amazing dart fish. They're called bicolor dart fish. If they go in the less blue light, you'll see them probably better. I have in here a feather star. I have like an uncannable number of inverts. I have all types of inverts, really. I have um, feather worms. I have some um, about 30 snails, all types of snails. I got in here some hermit crabs, Halloween hermits. I mean, you name it. Um, so it's been three months since my last water change on this setup. And uh, as you can see, algae is, well, not really existent. I got coralline. Um, oh, by the way, I got uh, Lazarus snails breeding in here constantly. And um, it's probably too small to see, but those little um, darker dots, actually they're babies that have hatched are crowding my tank now. So I do have uh, Lazarus snails populating in here. Apparently it's very hard to breed them, but I haven't really been praising them to breed. They just do it. You know, like most fish, they just do it. Um, so what are the specs here? Um, let's just start with the filtration. I said it in previous videos. I have a Tidal 110. I have a Jabao Wave Maker cross flow like this. And I have a Magnus, a uh, bubble Magnus skimmer on top right here. Very minimal, it was so small for my tank that I had to like knock it in and break part of my rim to put it on. So that's what it is. And I have two Kilo Ray um, lights. I have a tiny refugium, it's like a breeder box, if I can show you. It's attached here with a magnet. There's two types of algae. And I'm trying to grow a red mangrove on top. So aside that, I really don't do water changes. Um, I do top-offs daily if I see the water evaporate. Uh, currently I have covers on it, so it doesn't evaporate as fast. Um, but when I do top-offs, I just do um, tap water, by the way. It's just tap water. And this whole tank has been filled with tap water which I neutralized with some Seachem Safe, the powder. Instead of uh, using uh, Prime, I use Safe because Prime, in my experience, makes skimmers over skim and it's not quite the same. I prefer the powder version of the Seachem product, so it's safe. Yes, it's very safe. <laughs> oh, by the way, I totally forgot to tell you I have one damsel in here. I got a Clown Gobi. He is so cute. He's one of my oldest fish with those um, those clowns. I have a also, oh, a starry blenny. He is funny. See, this is my starry blenny. 
and oh I have shrimps obviously I have shrimps I have four shrimps here and there I have a few shrimps and I bought a gold head hold on I'm just trying to resume I bought a gold head uh, gobi a couple of weeks ago and I never seen it again it's not on the floor so it's still in the tank but I never seen it again uh, so back to our uh, sheep or muttons or whatever you want to call it back to the business uh, how do I maintain it? Uh, I do top off daily and uh, lately in the past month just for coral growth I have been adding and brace yourself like it's just something I already had in the house I have been adding some just the aura right um, it's normally it's to um, replenish uh, reverse osmosis water right so it has a bunch of minerals in it then you can use also like any supplement reef supplement if you have a bunch of like stony corals that need uh, magnesium and um, calcium in here really um, where's uh, where's the chemistry where does it even say what you have in there I don't know it doesn't say nothing um, but it supports your alkalinity ta -ta 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 -ta. anyways it's just the regular all right that I've been having for years uh, another thing that those tiny tiny bit and it's called iodine just regular iodine I'm not actually uh, even using like a product for aquarium it's just iodine so two drops uh, once or twice a week just you know make sure the corals have their iodine but iodine is present in seafood you feed them it's present in everything like don't try too hard. If you see your corals need a little kick, try iodine. And my other secret, secret, secret additive, uh, which I already mixed into my RO, so I don't have the bottle anymore. It's called strontium. So strontium helps stony corals build their, their uh, skeleton. It, alongside magnesium and calcium, it's one of the most important things to dose. Uh, many reefers will overlook it and be like ah strontium it's so like but it's something that sorry my light is messing up uh it's present in seawater and it's not so much present in your tap water uh and if, even like a lot of uh salt mixes don't really focus on it so they kind of dismiss it and that's why i don't use uh reef salt for my tank it's basically an experiment this tank uh, because I find a lot of reef salts are just poorly mixed like not all of them the Red Sea one is pretty good um, Aqua Forest I had so so results um, like I can name all of them but if you want balanced water just get tap water if your tap water is safe enough that's just my theory okay I'm not like the best 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 I'm just talking from my experience and from what my corals are doing so that's just what I'm talking about so don't overlook strontium strontium is very important along calcium and magnesium it's one of the building blocks of good corals and here we have my two little guys this is a clown a clown no not a, a Halloween hermit there you go Lazarus snails this is Bob the blob a folded brain coral and we have a few more corals so yeah well i'm showing this uh it's really easy it's an experimental tank so far it's working i don't think it's gonna crash anytime soon hopefully not uh i have all sorts of corals in it i have leathers i have uh akins i have stony corals i even have a uh, torch coral here and uh the most important for me is what i put in the tank because whatever you put in the tank is what stays in the tank um, and what stays in the tank is like what you feed them so what you feed them has to be um, well I feed them only the food that I make for them basically it's in my recipes I'll add it in the link up top or below uh, it's a seafood mix with the seaweed with uh, a few special ingredients with garlic ta 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 um, nori seaweed that I add in it I add kelp uh, like it's a good blend uh, because I noticed every time my clients would try to feed dry food to their reef tank hello cyano cyano if you don't know I'll try to insert it um, it's um, a bacterial algae basically it's 
basically made through bacteria build up in your tank sometimes it's because of a lack of flow and sometimes it's just what you're putting in your tank so cyano is not pleasant to see you need chemicals to get rid of you have to scrape it it's it's a pain in the ass basically so uh to avoid cyano i don't feed any dry food and if you feed them frozen food make sure to rinse it because um it's often frozen in nitrate nitrate nitrite something like that and that spikes up your nitrite haha -ha. <laughs> surprise surprise um so i hope you're seeing the colors as they are um so yeah basically uh feed good your tank and you won't have any cyano issues you won't have algae um now i'm talking for my clients okay uh if you're a new client of mine and you see algae it takes about six months for all the algae stages to uh, go through your tank so if you see uh, brown algae in the beginning it's normal if you see spot green algae it's normal if you see a bit of hair algae get a get a few algae eating fish such as tanks such as uh, urchins you'll deal with it it's just don't put too much crap in your tank and one day all this nasty algae that people think is nasty but it's just algae it's like grass in your yard <laughs> it's all gonna turn to coralline and coralline uh let me show you real quick no i think this is actually is, uh, is that coralline that, okay better example this is coralline okay so once you see this that means your tank is stable and it's growing good coralline uh, it's the last stages of algae. If you don't like coralline, just get a sea urchin to eat that. Uh, but I like coralline because it replaces all the other nasty algaes. <laughs> so there you go, guys. These are my reefing secrets. I'm Like I'm saying, I'm not the best at it, but I kind of know what I'm doing for now. So uh, I hope my tank doesn't crash. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your views and your comments. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell button just to get my latest notifications. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye.